Hi everyone. So I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I'm hearing a lot um, in, in the community right now, which is um, this word powerless. I feel very, very powerless. I've had so many distressing messages and calls, obviously with the lighthouse and including within just even my personal sphere that people feel powerless. And I want you to know that that feeling of powerlessness is at the base of every trauma. Imagine a young child who um, has gone through something difficult and they feel that they actually cannot influence that, uh, whether it be a divorce, whether it be a move, whether it be a death of a, you know, a loved one, that sense of powerlessness can actually be experienced as trauma. So I want to talk to you guys about what trauma is and what vicarious trauma is, what a collective trauma is, and how that is being experienced inside of all of us right now. Because all of us are experiencing a level of trauma right now. And so trauma is anything that is too big for us to manage. And that emotion, when it becomes very, very overwhelming and we do not have the cognitive resources or the emotional resources to cope with that thing, it actually is locked into our body as a traumatic response and into our psyche. And so and that's one kind of trauma. So most of us have gone through difficult experiences in our childhood, which is why they say no one leaves childhood unscathed and all adults are recovering children because at any point or some point in our life, we have all felt powerless. And so what we are witnessing around the world, whether it be through we are in the thick of COVID right now and jobs are being lost and stock markets and unemployment and businesses shutting down and people losing their loved ones and you know you feeling just so powerless on that front as well as everything that is happening around the murder of George Floyd and all the protests and the riots and the aggression that is sort of you know there uh, and the brutality that people are experiencing as a result of that that is actually also being experienced by us as trauma so the vicarious trauma is basically emotional resi residue that we actually experience when we witness or when we hear something that is some too overwhelming for us. And a lot of people ask us as psychologists, don't you guys get like traumatized by the things you're hearing or don't you hold all those emotions inside of you? As therapists, it is our responsibility to be able to process that, to allow, to have self-care, to have self-soothing practices, for us to be able to manage all the trauma that we actually listen to or hear all uh, throughout our practices. So it's going to come up to you at this point where you are going to have to learn to manage some of this um, trauma that might be being triggered, uh, the powerlessness that is being triggered, and how do you cope with that time? Because it's not just going to be that, oh, I'm just gonna watch this and I'm gonna read that and then I'm gonna go to bed. Because you hold all of that emotion inside of you. And it does end up reverberating inside of us and it ends up, you know, within our psyche, within our emotional body, and we must do something about that. So a few things that you can do something about is to remind yourself one again and again that you are safe keep saying i am safe i am safe now this is you basically reparenting that inner child inside of you that felt so scared every time there was change that felt so powerless every time there was change that felt so scared anytime there was uncertainty so you want to reparent that child and say it's just change you are safe and you know, everything is gonna be okay and you are safe. And so you wanna keep doing that. I can tell you, I've said it a thousand times in the last few days, is I am safe, I'm okay, everything is gonna be okay. Number two, you wanna ground yourself in the present moment. Remember that human beings, we are um, very, very connected to each other energetically and emotionally. And so when we see a trauma of someone else, when we see brutality happening, when we see murder taking place, it, it doesn't just sort of fly by us, it sits inside of us. And so you want to be able to 
connect with your physical body, allow yourself to feel the pain and then release that. And so in order for you to do that fully, you're gonna make sure you have to ground yourself in this moment. So whether it's walking barefoot on earth, whether it's soaking your feet in Epsom salts or soaking your whole body, uh, whether it is you actually um, you know, uh, exercising, what I end up doing is I charge on the treadmill and I huff and I puff and I literally blow it all out when it comes to just holding on to all of that whatever it is that you need to do to connect to your physical body and allow it to release. Exercise and yoga and meditation are great ways to do that, is to connect to your physical body and release some of that tension that you are holding on to. And then lastly, I would like to say that while we are all so angry and we are all enraged as to um, the injustices that are happening in the world right now, it is extremely important to make time to put the anger aside for a little bit and to feel what is happening underneath that anger. And so the question for you would be, if I was not angry, what other feelings would I be feeling right now? No healing, no forgiveness, no change that is true and real and enduring can happen unless you do that work. You have to feel what is underneath it. And if I were to say, when I remove the anger against the injustice that I'm seeing around the world right now, I would feel sad, I would feel hurt, I would feel angry, like not angry, but here I go again. I would feel so, so um, hurt that human beings can be this way with each other. I would feel so vulnerable. I would feel so disappointed. I would feel mostly, mostly, deeply, deeply sad. And that is a really vulnerable feeling to feel, that I am sad at the state of humanity right now, that people are just so, you know, they're, they're just hurting human beings. And, and that is very, very hard to feel. And that literally aches my heart. And so allow your heart to ache, allow your heart to break. Um, it will break open and there will be more love and compassion as a result of it. If you stay in the place of anger and, you know, a fight or flight and, you know, screaming and shouting and aggression, you will not get to the work and the work is inside of all of us. So be gentle with yourself during this time. It is a very, uh, uh, we are full of collective grief collective trauma at this time and we're all experiencing at the same time you want to be kind and gentle to yourself to each other and if there's anything that the lighthouse can do please let us know if there's anything i can do please let us know um, and we just know that we're here for you and um and we care and uh and that you're safe that it's going to be okay and that um this too shall pass and hopefully it will have changed us for the better.